Hey, it's me, GV. Welcome back to Let's Play Fallout New Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. In the last episode, we busted our way in through the Lucky 38. Mr. House and all of his Securitrons were already uh, hostile towards us, so we had to fight our way tooth and nail through all of them to get to him and kill him. We found out that, in fact, he wasn't a dashing gentleman, as you saw in his uh, computer screen, but he was a frail, withered old man, only kept alive through artificiality. Um, and basically now we can take control over New Vegas, although I don't think we should... Yeah, we need to talk to Yes Man who's at the Lucky 38. I guess he's in the penthouse. He might be on the casino floor, though. I would think he would be there. Hi! This is big, huh? A very big moment. Here it goes. I'll just take that platinum chip off your hands. Thanks. Wish me luck. Darn it. Wow, Mr. House had quite a setup here. I can access his data banks and view telemetry on every Securitron on the network. Wait, so. That's what the platinum chip does. Interesting. Mr. House had a whole demonstration planned for you. Just head downstairs to the lowest level to check it out. You'll see. A demonstration, you say? Looks like it's automatically moving me down there. Um, okay. Step closer to the demonstration area, please. Okay, so you're familiar with Securitrons by now, obviously. I mean, some of your best friends are Securitrons, right? <laughs> Our titanium alloy housing does a good job for protecting our delicate electron systems from small arms firing Our left arm contains an X-25 gasoline laser, quite deadly against our targets in your range. That looks like fun. And for close range suppression and crowd control, we have the CAMP and CAMP 9 mm This is old hat, right? Here is where it gets interesting. Turns out that those are our secondary weapons. All this time we've been running the Mark I operating system, which doesn't have drivers for our primary weapons. Imagine! Now watch this. I'm downloading the Mark II OS to all Securitrons on the network. It makes quite a difference. With the M-235 missile launcher, we can engage with radio and air And a rapid-fire system that makes us deadly in close-range engagements. Woo! Look at that! The OS upgrade also includes drivers for our onboard auto repair systems. Just try to hurt us now! All together, this software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness. Per unit. New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. You can come back up and see me or be on your way. I know you're a busy person. My God. What have we done? I can't get over how brave you were to destroy... All those Securitrons at the fort, you know? It's just gonna make everything so much more... Uh, challenging. Yeah. Challenging. I can see, uh, it's already been a lot more challenging than my previous playthroughs already, and the difficulty is, uh, increased from when I was on those playthroughs, so... Not a good combination. Which tribe should I get to know? There's a bunch. Some of them you've already met, like the chairman, for instance. I think you should visit the other families on this trip, the Omertas and the White Glove Society, so you know what makes them tick. And there are some important groups farther from the strip, too, like the Boomers, the Great Khans, and the Brotherhood of Steel. Let's talk about the tribes I should get to know. Of course, ask away. I think the first one that we'll do, because we're going to do all of these, is... 
the White Glove Society. What do you know about the White Glove Society? From what I understand, they're perfectly delightful. They're cultured, clean, and super polite. Benny didn't like them though. He said they were creepy. I'll let you know when I'm done evaluating the White Glove Society. Don't hurry on my account. I'm the one with a flexible schedule. Anything else I can help with? I think we are good. Sorry if that was getting boring. Goodbye. Don't stay away too long. Okay, so one thing I don't like about New Vegas is that it gives you all these quests, but they're not really quests. If we go into our quest menu, uh, we have two new quests. Beware the Wrath of Kaisar. The Legion has spies everywhere. If you continue to work against its interests, you will be marked as an enemy. Don't tread on the bear. The NCR is a robust network of informants. If you continue to work with Yes Man, the NCR will no longer accept your help. So basically, this is just informing you that you're going to make enemies if you do things your own way. But I want to do things my own way anyways. I don't really care. Let's activate wildcard side bets and visit the White Glove Society at the Ultra Lux Casino. That is what we will do. Unfortunately, Jane's dead, so I don't think we're going to be getting any caps in the form of snow globes. But that's okay. Um, I'm going to go to my presidential suite, drop off all the excess stuff I have, and then we'll head on over to the Ultra Lux. Alright, so before we head to the Ultra Lux, one thing I wanted to show you guys is that the Securitrons have a Obituaries new. Obituaries of the recently deceased Mr. House, President, CEO, and sole proprietor of the Vegas Strip are still available. Just ask any Securitron. Yeah, so their face has been upgraded here from like a cop to an army soldier because they've been increased, uh, you know, their combat effectiveness. Combat effectiveness, as you can see here, they're called Securitron Mark II's now. Also, I forgot about that. Yeah, we did get a note that was, I believe, an obituary for Mr. House. Let's see how long it is. That is very long. I will scroll down somewhat slowly. Uh, so you guys can pause it. You know what? No, you guys can read. You guys can find it online anyways if you want. But basically, it's it's a history of Mr. House and what he's accomplished and everything. But, you know what? He was selfish. And I believe we could be a better leader anyways. So, sorry. It just had to be done. But in front of us, we have the Ultra Lux Vegas Resort. And as you can see, it looks very posh. Very posh indeed. Especially this green, disgusting water. Uh, yeah. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and walk inside of here. The Ultra Lux Casino floor. This is a casino, but it's also home to one of the factions, the White Glove Society, who apparently are very polite. Oh, look, and there's a billboard for it right there. The best of everything, all in one place, the Ultra Lux. But one thing you have to keep in mind. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble you to turn over your weapons? So remember about Benny calling them creepy? Yeah, they look a little bit creepy, don't they? Why do you need my guns? I know why you need them, but I just wanted to be an asshole. Sure, here you go. My deepest apologies for the slightest inconvenience. You have my assurance that everything will be returned upon your departure. But we simply can't have anyone waving their weapons around in the hotel. It's not the atmosphere we wish to cultivate. Please, enjoy your stay. I understand. Goodbye. Farewell. Okay, so we could do some wheeling and dealing in here if we wanted to, but... We will focus on the quest at hand. Learn about the White Glove Society by talking to one of its leaders. And let's see, we've got a whole bunch of quest markers. I don't know who we're going to need to talk to though, to be quite honest. Um, probably somebody with a mask, but all these people don't have dialogue. We do have two quest markers in this direction though. I hope they don't leave. Do you have any dialogue? Such a shame. No. I hope they don't lead us to the outside. Okay, let's see. Where does this lead? It's just a door. We do have a person, though, so that's good. Ah, yes, this man, Mortimer. How may I be of service, sir? What can you tell me about your organization, Mortimer? My, such a popular question. I suppose it is only natural to see us and wonder what it is that makes us special. The White Glove Society has only just made itself known to the public, of course. But our pedigree was established over generations. Were we always so refined? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said yes. But I've always felt we were destined for a place atop modern society. And now, here we are. Not everyone can wear the finest clothes and eat the finest foods, obviously. That's just the reality we live in. 
But surely we can agree that the most tasteful, sophisticated people are the most deserving. And that's what the White Glove Society is all about. Okay, we have nothing else that we can talk to him Indeed. about, at least for this quest. But we still have a map marker leading to him. But now it's gone. Find out more about the White Glove Society by talking to Marjorie. Tell Yes Man that you've decided to ignore the White Glove Society. But of course we're not going to do that. How boring would that be? So let's find this Marjorie person. Let's see. The Gourmand at the Ultralux. Sounds like a restaurant and I already actually know that it is. You know what? There's there's a funny thing with this place. I, I believe it's this place. There is a casino that has a pool. I think it's the Ultralux. Um, and I remember doing an achievement, like taking a bunch of damage. I think I was drowning myself. Oh no, yeah, I remember. There's an achievement for eating a cert for restoring a certain amount of health with food items, and it's a big amount. And I would drown myself in the pool and then heal it back up with food to get that achievement. And I think it's in this place. Anyways, here we have Marjorie. How do you Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. Do you work here? I do, but one can hardly call it work. I think of myself as a caretaker rather than a common laborer. I suppose it is a labor of love if it can be called labor at all. We at the White Glove Society are all responsible for maintaining the beauty and class of the Ultralux. And as its founder, I suppose it falls to me to decide how we go about it. Okay, goodbye. Ta-ta. So this is very odd. It's telling us to talk to these people, but they're not giving us any information here. And there goes the optional objective. So what do you need me to do, quest? Tell yes, man. Okay. But obviously there's some other stuff going on here. Welcome to the Ultra Luck. Okay, this is very odd indeed. Uh, unless the quest objective pops up here, I think I know who I want to talk to next. But yeah, this is very odd how it's telling us to talk to two people. They're not really giving us too much information. Um, well, they, they are, but you know, it's like boring information that would be in real life. This is a video game, so obviously there needs to be something to spice it up here. Let's walk back into the main area. We still have two quest markers though, which is kind of odd. Oh, you know what? There must be one for each of those double doors, I guess. Okay, so here we have Heck Gunderson. Beg your pardon, stranger, but I'm looking for someone. You ain't seen a young man with dark brown hair and a white hat on lately, have you? No, I haven't. <sighs> ain't nobody got one darn piece of news about my boy. Not one lousy speck of information. Ain't got one Brahmin unaccounted for across a dozen ranches, but I'm here for an hour and my own son just up and disappears on me. So you're a rancher? Yep. Got a whole mess of Brahmins to my name. Bighorners, too. Used to just have the one- Okay, that's all good and well. Uh, you lost your son? My boy, Ted. He was right here. I didn't leave him but a minute. I told him to stay put while I talked some things over with the White Glove folks. He was never one to stay tied down to a spot, though. Gets that from his mother. Got most of my staff out looking for him now. I'd be out myself, but I keep hoping he'll show up back here. Of course, if he does that, I'll whoop him till his skinny hide turns to leather for putting me through this. But that don't mean I wouldn't be grateful. Let me help find your son. I'd be more than happy to have you. Heck, I'll hire anybody with a pair of legs and at least one good eye at this point. There'd be a lot of money in it for you if you can get him back to me safe. And if he ain't, you can bet I'll pay for the names of the sons of bitches responsible. Well, that's a little foreboding. Goodbye. I'll be here. Alright, so we got ourselves a new quest here called Beyond the Beef. Get Ted back to his father if he is still alive. I can't believe they they foreshadow it like that. Why not just say get Ted back to his father? Ask around the Ultra Lux for information regarding Ted Gunderson's disappearance. Let's see, we have Gunderson hired hand, but he has no dialogue. We have this dude, but he has no dialogue. So I think what we should do, because I don't think any of these people have dialogue either. Who is this? Gambler? Okay. I think what we should do is we should head back to Mortimer and Marjorie, the only two people that seem to have unique names in this place other than Heck Gunderson. How's it going, Mortimer? How may I be of service, sir? And he has no dialogue options. Okay, what is with this place? Oh, actually, it is leading me over here. It's probably going to lead me to Marjorie. All right. 
How's it going, Marjorie? How Welcome to the Ultralux. Yep, you already said that. I'm looking for someone who went missing here recently. This again? I thought this was all settled. I answered every one of that investigator's questions to his satisfaction and gave all the help I could. I know our reputation hasn't always been spotless, but that's all in the past now. How some people can't get over it is beyond me. For the last time, the White Glove Society has never and will never consume human flesh for any reason. It's written in the charter. Whoa, okay, did not ask you about consuming human flesh. What in the world did we get ourselves into here? Who did you talk about the disappearance? There was an investigator who came through here last week. He'd been hired by a young man whose bride-to-be went missing during their stay here. Well, you can already guess what probably happened, can't you? It seems perfectly likely that she got cold feet and ran off. And that young groom just didn't have a clue, the poor dear. I'm investigating someone else, a man, and he just recently went missing. A man? Well, then this... well, this can't be. Two disappearances in my hotel? What will people say? Probably that you're consuming I'm his flesh. I'm going to have a word with my staff about security on the premises. Whether these people are found or not, our guests simply must feel safe in their own rooms. Is there any way I could talk to the investigator? Why, yes, I think so. If he hasn't checked out yet, that is. I had our maitre d' Mortimer offer him a complimentary room for as long as it took for him to be satisfied. You see? The White Glove Society remains the very picture of courtesy, even in the face of such impolite accusations. We have nothing to hide here. The White Glove Society used to eat human flesh? Now, didn't I already tell you that we don't do that sort of thing? We do not engage in cannibalism here under any circumstances. Though we haven't always been the White Glove Society. There was another time, a dark time, when we went by a different name. But that's all changed now. We've evolved past such base impulses since settling into our new home. I've seen to it that those days are behind us. We can lie and say it's okay, I eat people too, you can tell me the truth. I wonder if that cannibalism perk is in this game. It must be, and like, if you have it, it wouldn't be a lie, though. You, yeah, there must be a unique dialogue option. Goodbye, Marjorie. One thing that I thought was really cool about New Vegas is that you think, like, all these people are civilized, right? I mean, they're living in a, in a place called the Ultra Lux. Everyone's wearing clothes and all that sort of... We would hope everyone's wearing clothes, but you know what I mean, fancy clothes. But you gotta realize, like, they all came from tribes, which is why even the chairman, like, the people that Benny was a part of, he was, like, a part of a tribe that, you know, like, roamed the wasteland and then found his place in society. So, I just think it's cool how, like, there's a backstory of all these different tribes and stuff. Anyways, here we have Mortimer. Good day. How may I be of service, sir? Uh, Marjorie said you gave a free room to a private investigator. Private investigator. Ah, yes, I remember the gentleman. This was about the missing bride. Such an awful thing. I do hope he finds her whereabouts. If I might pry, have you found something that will help his investigation? I'm on investigation too. I'm hoping we can help each other. You are? Nothing so grim as his investigation, I hope. Ordinarily, we don't give out guest information, but I think, given the circumstances, he'll want to speak with you. Let's see. He hasn't checked out yet. If you head back to the hotel rooms, his will be one floor directly above you after you exit the lobby. I hope we can put this whole matter to rest at last. Me too. I've heard your group dines on human flesh. I've heard your group dines on human flesh. Ah, yes. I've heard that one too. Jealous people say such nasty things. I feel sorry for them. So it isn't true, then? I can assure you that the only thing the White Glove Society is guilty of is preparing the tastiest cuisine you'll ever sample. That is, of course, if you can afford it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end this episode here. Something very odd is obviously going on with the Ultra Lux and all this talk about human flesh and cannibalism. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to find Heck Gunderson's son in the next episode, and I will see you guys there. Bye-bye.